Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'm going to be doing a gear review today on two items, but I just thought I would show you the finished product on my GHB. You've been following the progress. Um, what I did was I finally added the Maxpedition uh, M4 pouch over on the right-hand side to hold my canteen, and you can see that I put the second water carrier that used to be on the right-hand side on the outside using the Molly straps, and the Maxpedition uh, Tactile Small is also mounted on there and I have some uh, some small items in there like my my Gerber and my uh, my Gerber multi-tool and batteries and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna hike down. I'm out in the woods with the dogs right now. This is where I walk my dogs every day. I'm up in the Wachung Reservation. There's China and Naya's right there and I'm gonna head down to a water source and I'm gonna do a review on a cadet and water filter and a SteriPen. So as soon as I get down there, I'll fire the camera back up. Thanks for tuning in, guys, appreciate it. And going back to the bag real quick, there is one addition that I added onto the straps. I do have the cell phone holder that's always been there. You can see the Exumer from Dead On Tools is mounted there. But I added this small pouch right here and that's actually a frag grenade pouch from 511 and I have my uh, Garmin Colorado 400T GPS unit in there and I'm going to probably do a review on that once I get a little bit more familiar with it and I think I can put some uh, some valuable information out there. I just don't want to talk about it without knowing what I'm talking about, okay? So that's it. Talk to you soon. Okay, I've reached my water source. I'm in a place called Blue Brook. This is down at the bottom of the Pine Forest in the Wachung Reservation. And this water source is pretty much always here and it's always active. The water's always flowing down here. There's a couple of small streams on my way down here, but the water seems to be stagnant most of the time. And I've never felt comfortable using stagnant water, even if I'm going to purify it for, you know, my drinking or cooking water. So this is where I'm going to do my demo. Well, as you can obviously tell, I'm no longer outside. Uh, I had to bring this demo inside. I was setting up for another shot. I heard a loud splash and I looked over and Naya was completely underwater. It was actually very funny. Um, but it was really cold out that day. It was about 21 degrees and I had to get her out of the weather. So pulled my coat off, pulled off my sweatshirt, wiped her down, uh, got her as dry as I could. It was about a third of a mile hike back to the car and uh, just wanted to get her out of the weather. So uh, you were really only going to see me pump water and stuff like that anyway. So you're really not missing much. But I want to finish up my presentation right now. I was going to do uh, a demo on my, uh, my filtration and my sterilization on my water. Now I do have backups here, okay? And I do use both of these when I'm gonna be sterilizing my water. Now, my, my filter is a Katadin Hiker, and this is exactly what it says. It's a filter. It's gonna filter out water, it's gonna filter out sediment, and it's gonna get 99.9% .9 of the microorganisms, uh, Jardia, Cryptosporidium. But if some of it gets through and it gets into your water, if it gets into your system and it has a chance to multiply, that's how you're gonna get sick. And um, I decided I was going to also go with a SteriPen. I was given a gift card for Christmas, and um, I figured I would get myself one of these. Now, there's a couple of good features to this, and there's a couple of down features to this, and I'll go over both of them. First off, I'll go over the good things with it. What this does is it kills the microorganisms. It doesn't filter them out, but it will kill them. That means that if you do ingest them, they're not going to multiply, and that's how you get sick. Um, one of the other features that I like about this is we all know that you can filter water and you can boil it. The problem with that is, is you have to wait for the water to cool down. Now the manufacturer says there's two benefits to using this over boiling your water. First off, if it's been raining for a couple of days, it may be very difficult to get a fire started. You may be out of material to light a fire or it may be difficult to find dry tinder to get something going. The other thing is, is you have to wait for that water to cool down. Now, if it's in the winter and you can put it in the snow and let the snow cool it off, that's fine. 
But if it's in the summer, you have to wait 10 or 15 minutes if you're really thirsty. That may be, uh, that may be a downside, okay? One of the downsides to this unit that I don't like is, first off, it runs on batteries. And that's more things that you have to carry with you. Um, batteries can go dead. They can, uh, they can just run out on you when, you when you need them the most. And the other thing that I don't like about it is the manufacturer states that you should not use alkaline batteries with this. The alkaline batteries don't have enough power in them to fully um, bring the UV bulb up to its highest, uh, highest um, setting or whatever and do the job it needs to do to kill the water. So they recommend that you either use um, lithium batteries or rechargeables. Now I have rechargeables in here and I'm not crazy about them because rechargeable batteries have a tendency to lose 0.5% of their charge per day that they're not used. So if this is sitting in your pack for a few days and you go to use it, your battery life may be down. And if you don't have a way to plug your charger in and get it charged back up, you may run into a problem with that. So there's pros and cons to it, all right? I'm gonna try to live with the, with the pros on it. But just to give you an idea of how it works, and what I did is I just filled up a small uh, bottle here so you can see how the light works and, and how it would work. I was gonna do it with my canteen, you wouldn't have seen it. But based on how much water you're gonna use or how much water you're gonna uh, sterilize, you hit the button, so you hit it twice for less than one liter. You wait for the green light, you pop it in, and when the sensors get wet, the light will come on. And I think you can see that right there. And what that's doing right now is that is sending UV rays into the, into the water, and that is killing. Not filtering, but it's killing any, any of the microorganisms. And all you would do, <clears throat> excuse me, is just shake it up, let it get in there, and you're just going to wait until the green light comes on. And when the green light comes on, it tells you it's done filtering. It's done its job. So um, that's pretty much it. I'm going to take it out into the field, uh, maybe without the dogs, and uh, test it out. I'll give you a full report, let you know if I get sick or anything like that. But that's pretty much my water filtration system. Again, I fully believe in boiling water and stuff like that. But like the manufacturer says, they gave me a couple of cons to that. And I kind of, I kind of agree with them on that, all right? So again, we'll just wait for that, and there you go. You can see the light went off, and I should have perfectly sterile, clean drinking water right there. All right, <clears throat> excuse me again. So guys, thanks very much for tuning in. Again, I really appreciate it. Thanks to all my subscribers. You have any questions or comments or anything like that, please feel free to let me know, okay? Thanks for tuning in, guys. Take care.